I remember when I was just learning about the world of online business, I stumbled upon a product that promised the secret formula the guy used to make tens of thousands of dollars online, and it only cost $49. At that point, I was highly gullible and unaware of the scummy tactics that people used, so I purchased it. And as you can probably guess, that product was absolutely terrible. It was the complete opposite of a perennial seller, and the only reason I bought it was because his marketing and his funnel were incredibly effective. But do you think that I would ever recommend that product to any of my friends? Hell no. If anyone asked me, I would tell people to stay away from that person and not buy anything from them. Basically, instead of turning me into a super fan, this product turned me into a super hater. And since that product was so terrible, he had to constantly bring in new buyers through ads and partnerships and his user retention was completely miserable. You might be wondering what happened to the seller of that product now. He's gone. His site is down and he is absolutely nowhere to be found. But what would have happened if he actually followed the perennial seller blueprint? What if he created an absolutely amazing product that brought results and then what if he tested it with his target market and improved it using their feedback, launched it while building some buzz, and actually built an audience that loved his high quality products and would buy pretty much anything he created. Do you think he would still be around now? The answer is most likely yes. However, now the question is, how do you actually create perennial selling work? After all, everyone dreams of creating work that sells for decades to come, but instead, most people focus on immediate payoffs and instant gratification. This means that if you do focus on creating a perennial seller, you actually have the advantage. So what do you start with? It's not with the target audience, it's not with the value you can bring, and it's not with the idea. It all starts with accepting that the work is key. Obviously, everything else I've mentioned is important, but if you don't fully commit to the work, you've already lost. After all, the difference between a great work and an idea for a great work is all the sweat, time, effort and agony that go into engaging that idea and turning it into something real. This means you can't focus on quick payoffs and instant gratification because if you want to make something timeless, you cannot hurry. However, you also shouldn't be a hermit that goes into his room and comes out five years later with a complete project. I remember reading a post about potential profitable website ideas and I got an idea that I just I knew that it was going to be a winner. More and more people were teaching others how to make money with Facebook ads, and there was nothing like that for Reddit advertising, so I was going to become the Reddit advertising guru or professional. I spent weeks on creating my site, running ad experiments, and writing posts, but when I actually launched the site to the world and got more and more feedback, I realized that this wasn't nearly as needed as I thought it was. I didn't test my idea on a small scale, and instead I spent a month on a project that was destined to go nowhere. Of course, a month isn't much in the grand scheme of things, but how many people do this for years or even decades? Way too many. You have to have the capacity and the humility to test your idea quickly and see if what you're doing is actually needed. An idea for a book may start out as a conversation at a dinner table, a short article or video, but definitely not as a full-blown manuscript because you don't want to waste all that time for nothing. After all, if you would be satisfied with no one seeing your work, you could just sit in the dark room and imagine that you've already finished it. But that's not what you want, so make sure you actually test your idea. So what do you do once you have an idea that people seem to be responding well to? You have to figure out who you're writing for and what problem it solves for them. After all, how are you supposed to create something timeless if you don't even know who you're creating it for? You're unlikely to hit a target you have not aimed at. One way to do this is to find a person either real or imaginary, that is pretty much your ideal customer. Then you can always check if your work is in tune with that audience. But just remember that this doesn't mean that you're only limited to that audience. But if you're creating something for everyone, you're basically creating for no one. So what do you do once you've created your product? You might think it's done, but most of the time it's nowhere near being close to done. You still have to polish, improve, and position your project so that it has a chance of resonating with your audience. After all, audiences don't know what is inside something they haven't seen. They don't know that your product can change their lives. It's your job to show them your product is the right one for them. As a creator, you might want to skip the step because you've already created the thing you wanted to 
and now you're just craving to let it out onto the world. However, the work you do now can be the difference between a quick hit and a perennial seller. Don't hurry. The extra days or even weeks now won't seem excessive in a year or even 10 years. And those extra days can mean that your work is still selling in those 10 years. I used to have a gaming YouTube channel that was moderately successful at about 2,000 subscribers. I put out pretty simple videos with minimal editing and I got a pretty steady trickle of subscribers every month. However, one day I decided to create a well-edited custom mashup video for the game I played the most. I spent about 10 times as long in creating and editing that video as my other ones. But as a result, that video brought me 30 times more subscribers than my regular videos and became the highest watched video on my channel within a week. However, after that, I went straight back to creating regular, simple videos. Please learn from my mistakes. Don't ignore the success you can have by putting in more work than you think is necessary. Now you might be getting to the point of where you're completely done with the project. All that's left is the marketing, but don't be fooled. It's not easy by any means because you're not just competing with the work that's being released right now. You're also competing with all the other greats that came before you. All the shows are competing with Breaking Bad and Seinfeld. All the books have to compete with Harry Potter or Shakespeare and all the films have to compete with the classics. If you're better than the stuff that's released at the same time as you, congratulations. That will lead to sales and you might outsell them for a little bit. However, Smokey and the Bandit beat out Star Wars in the box office when both movies were released. But now one has numerous sequels and billions of dollars in sales and toys, while the other one has been pretty much forgotten about. This can make you feel better if your launch isn't a huge success, but even if your launch is a huge success, you still have to put in the work afterwards. You can't just ride on the coattails of success for decades. Now you might be wondering, how should you actually do the marketing? One thing is that even though launch dates are artificial, they still work very well. If you can build some buzz around your product beforehand or right when you launch, people will usually crowd to what seems popular at the time, which at that moment will be you. And if your product is great and if you keep promoting it, you should start getting some word of mouth which will eventually snowball and allow you to let up on your personal promotion. Also, don't be afraid of free. If you have to give up parts of your work, or even some of your work, or most of your work for free, it might be a good idea to do so. After all, the problem for most artists is in piracy. It's obscurity. Once you've done all the work of creating your book, and you're on the tail end of marketing it, the best way you can continue making your work popular and selling more is by starting another project. The perennial seller requires more than just releasing a project into the world. It requires the development of a career. If you keep creating amazing work after amazing work, the sales of your new work will bring the sales of your previous work up. And while that might not make you a bestseller, it's better to continuously sell than to have quick success and then burn out. And even if the release of your first project was not a raging success, if you put in the work to make it great, its sales might still increase later on. You also have to realize one thing. It doesn't matter how popular your product is or how long you've been doing it. To the majority of people in the world, you and your product will always be new. And finally, there's always the question of luck. Luck is polarizing. The successful like to pretend it doesn't exist, and the unsuccessful pretend that it is everything. However, that does not mean that you should give up. If you're working hard and you get lucky, it's very noticeable. But if you're not working hard and you get lucky, you won't even notice your luck. So in the end, all that you're left with is simply hard work.